A pleasure to me all at last, and welcome once again to Nerf Secrets Revealed After Sod Part 2, where I partake on a good amount of blasters to showcase, overview, and test out a specific mod, an experimental formula that I refer to as the Invisibullet. If you remember from years ago, when I started a lot of this, there were definitely a lot of different expectations that I had that were rather low. But I feel like over time, with all sorts of tests that I've concocted and all sorts of results that I've discovered, as well as some not so great moments in history, it does seem that when it comes to Nerf Blasters, especially the more recent variety, we technically don't quite have that much to work with at this moment. Mostly because a lot of times there's brand new types of ammo that we hadn't seen before or worked with before, and also at times the designs of some blasters can be a bit difficult to work with, often because of certain permanent fixtures. As you might recall from when I had just reviewed the N-Series pointer, this is one unique case scenario in which that I had in fact discovered a lot of different things that would surely made things a little more challenging throughout my whole career. So with that in mind, let's take a little break from that to get back on to the Super Series. Because after all, I did mention that the N-Series is in fact the thing for 2024, but this is in fact something that came out two years prior, the Ranger PD-5. Part of the Elite 2.0, as they refer to it, but I've always referred to this as Super. An Elite 2.0 can never truly beat the Elite 1.0, the one of course that had been around between 2012 and 2020. Because once they brought this series around by mid-June of 2020, this was supposedly their way of attempting to take out the original Elite series in favor of trying something new. Albeit with some not so great moments that happened in the series firsthand when it originally began with some cheap cost cuts and a lot of corners that were basically unchecked. So of course, with the Ranger PD-5, some of us did have some of these expectations, if not more so than with other people. But the way I see it, this actually is a really good way to have another new blaster in the lineup. One that has more of a shotgun-like feel to it especially given the fact that it uses one of these, much like the Double Breach, much like other blasters that I've had in my collection over the years. And I don't know whether it's supposed to be shotgun-like or whatnot, but I guess we're bound to find out at some point during this test session. Anyways, this is a five dart blaster in which it holds five darts with five barrels in overall. So it's not at all anything like what we've seen in blasters like the Rough Cut, being that it had three more barrels put into it. Although, there is at least one unique advantage. This comes standard with dart storage right underneath the barrels. It also does have a good amount of sling adapter points, which you could also use the empty dart storage holes right here as well. And for the record, you can see that they have a hexagon pattern in them instead of the standard circular one. This actually does make it a lot better to grip onto them in the faces where things get a little shaky, like on an earthquake or something. So, the hexagon pattern was certainly a better approach than to go for the typical circular stuff. Even with the Ultra 3, for instance, that had a more circular series of hole cutouts made for storage for extra darts. But in terms of the blaster's functionality, it's nothing all too special. In fact, you might even recall when I used this in Distance Gauge Season 2 last year. And well, performance of this blaster was actually really good, considering this kind of blaster is medium sized, and the cost of this blaster was a good relative $20, $25, depending on which department you're going for. So. Yeah. Of course, this blaster does have some great colors in it, as always. Lots of unique textures, cutouts, and some unique molding, including these parts here, which of course turn into the barrels themselves. It almost does give me similar vibes as to what you could probably do with a zombie strike blaster. Or, better yet, considering that we're, of course, referring back to more recent history, like when I had just completed and published my review of the Pointer Blaster, both in its original and modified glory with the Invisible Attest. 
We could just refer to the zombie line, which is technically just another way to bring Zombie Strike back full circle, yet rebrand it in a not so great way. Probably the real best thing about those blasters though would be the insane graphics art that they printed on the sides of the blasters. But other than that, I do hope the zombie series, whether zombie or zombie strike, as they probably should have just kept it that way. Whatever the case may be though, I do hope it sticks around for a while. There's just a lot of ideas that you can put together in that lineup alone. Zombie themed nerf blasters just seem like an endless load of possibilities and imaginative thought process that how could they just let it go to waste well who really knows anyways though with the ranger pd5 you got good functionality including pump action you got good dart storage you got good five barrels along with the smart ar system you got good sling mounts a large tack rail on top if you wanted to have more dart storage on top or scopes or whatnot there's even a stock adapter back here which there are, in fact, some stocks that came out of the lineup itself, including the Destroyer Rev 5. Another blaster of this particular lineup that I had also reviewed not too long ago. And so, the only thing that I really have to do now is basically insert a couple of Invisibilets in, and we shall see how it goes down. Well, just as I suspected. This is of course a blaster that basically fools me into thinking that it's something particularly different. Successfully fooled me into thinking it's different. And well, I almost figured this was shotgun like, but apparently it's kind of more on a whim with the likes of assault rifles. And the size alone does make sense to this. Maybe if we add a stock to this and modify the barrels a bit, it probably would help in its own regard. And I do get the feeling that with each barrel, it basically acts as its own magazine to it. Considering how long these are, it might just be the cause. I only went through one of these, but you know what? It's already good enough as it is. I got what I was looking for. Ranger PD-5 is a great blaster, one that anyone could have in their collection. Sure, it might seem a bit generic, but the impressive feel, including the pump action, the nice capabilities, including dart storage, stock adapters, and tactical rails, as well as a large amount of sling mounts. Considering how many ways you could hold up your blaster, like on a pegboard, for instance, like I do, there's certainly lots of ways you can pull it off. But I'm sure any of you would want to look forward to putting the Ranger PD-5 up in a certain way. And with all these other things put together, not many cons to look forward to. This does bring this blaster at a nice big scoring of 8.8 .8 out of 10.1. So, might seem a bit generous, but in the end, I got it going well. So, I'll do another blaster overview, showcase, and test of the Invisible at Mod pretty soon. But until then, I will see you guys later with more of this content.